Hey everybody, Pastor Mike here. You know, on Sunday I had preached a message on the importance of getting into our Bibles and reading them and understanding them and, and just really studying them and making, making it part of our life. And one thing that I wasn't able to do on Sunday was be able to point you uh, in certain directions as far as resources go for uh, for you to be able to uh, be able to read your Bible better. And so I just want to take a couple minutes of your time. I'm going to try to make it brief, although for me, that's hard to make things brief. Um, so uh, here are some resources that you can use to read your Bible better. First, I have made a couple of YouTube playlists for you. The first one is a five video session from Jen Wilkin. Her just teaching us how we can study scripture better. Uh, I'll put that link in the comments. In fact, I'll put the links to all these things in the comments as we, uh, after I finish this and upload it. Second uh, playlist that I put on there is a playlist called How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth. So I would, uh, I would encourage you to check that out because uh, the authors of those, uh, those chapters uh, will go through in these videos uh, different sections of Scripture and how to think through them. Also, don't forget that there are a number of good resources on Right Now Media. If you don't have a Right Now Media account, uh, I will put a link in that so you can get a free account to Right Now Media. It's the largest Bible study, uh, video Bible study resource on the internet. Emmanuel has a churchwide account and it gives you free access. So if you don't have an account for that, look in the, in the uh, uh, comment section and there will be a link for it. Okay, just a few books that I think would be helpful for you too if you are um, in, in the market for some good books. The first one is called 40 Questions About Interpreting the Bible. It is from the 40 Question and Answer series, which is a, a, a fantastic series if you are interested in looking at different topics. Written by Robert Plummer, who is uh, hermeneutics, and that's a big word for uh, interpreting the Bible. He's a hermeneutics professor at Southern Seminary, which is my alma mater. And Second, I just uh, already mentioned a little bit of the video series that I have posted on, on YouTube for you called How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth. That's a great book for you to check out as well. Also, some of you already have, if you haven't gotten it yet, uh, there's a great resource called How to Read the Bible Book by Book. And I would strongly encourage them. The authors there, Douglas Stewart is a uh, professor. I think he's still a professor at Gordon Conwell of the Old Testament. And I just, I, I, I think the world of him. And also Gordon Fee is a distinguished uh, New Testament scholar as well. And it's the thing about it is that it's not scholarly. It is written for people like you and for me to be able to understand and love and delight in God's word more. <laughs> Easy commentary series that uh, I would strongly recommend. The first one is called the For You series. It doesn't have all 66 books of the Bible out yet, but the ones that are out are amazing. Uh, it is uh, it it helps you to be able to uh, read it, to teach it, and and just to uh, just to feed your own soul as well. Written very down to earth. The other commentary series that I strongly recommend is called the Reformed Expository Series. And that doesn't have all 66 books either, but any volume that you have uh, that you can get a hold of, you are, you're not going to go wrong on that either. If you're a tech person, uh, there are a few apps or a few uh, software things that you might want to think about looking into as well. Uh, the first one, obviously, is the YouVersion uh, Bible app. And so if you have a phone, uh, which I'm sure all of us do, you just uh, look for the Bible app or YouVersion on the Google Store or the Apple uh, App Store and download that. It has tons and tons of plans. Any translation that you could want. Um, the only downside that I that I found is that right now the way that they've kind of worked it out makes it look more like a social media platform than it does a, a Bible app. But if you can look past those things, uh, U version is amazing, uh, an amazing app for you. Also, one thing that and this is a paid service for this next one that I'm going to tell you, it is called uh, the the Dwell app, and I personally use the Dwell app and I absolutely love it. It is an audio Bible um, app that has uh, different people reading the scriptures and uh, in different translations. And really, you almost have to try it 
uh, in order to to see the, the the wonder of it. But I love the Dwell app, and so I would I would highly recommend that. Um, Logos is a software that you can uh, that you can purchase. I think they have a free version um, that has very limited resources, uh, or you can get like a basics one for like fifty bucks. But then it it, it it can get super expensive from there. So Logos would be one that you might want to look into. Very good if you're a PC user. Um, I haven't used Logos or at least new ones on a Mac for a while. For uh, Forever, it was very slow on a Mac. Hopefully that's changed. But the other one that you can look at is called Accordance Bible uh, Software. And this is really good if you're a Mac user. Um, it it is uh, it has some features on it that are that are better than Logos. Obviously, Logos has some that are better than than Accordance. But you might want to look into that. I believe there is a free um, a free package for Accordance as well. Um, but then again, the bigger the package, the the more you're gonna you're gonna pay for that. All right, just some basic websites that you can look at. Obviously, Bible Gateway is very good uh, for basic searches, whether you're looking up just an individual passage or if you're looking up a topic, uh, really any language, any, uh, any translation, uh, Bible Gateway is the way to go. Bible Gateway is what I would use um, when I'm searching up things or when I'm copying and pasting and putting it into a PowerPoint or in my sermon, whatever. It's great. There is a paid service for it, but I'm going to be honest with you. I have no clue what in the world the paid service does for Bible Gateway. Uh, another um, thing that you might want to look at is if you, were, if you are really wanting to get into commentaries, there is a website called bestcommentaries.com. And the really cool thing about Best Commentaries is that if you look in the, the book of the Bible or a theological work that you might want to uh, look into, it actually has crowdsourced rankings in it. And so uh, people actually vote on uh, what commentaries were the most helpful for them um, for certain reasons. And that's helpful because it's not driven by publishers. Uh, there's no money going into this for people to say, this is great, because I have bought some commentaries before, spent a lot of money on commentaries that I read it, and I'm like, this, this doesn't sound right. And so Best Commentaries is really good for sort of weeding those things out and finding uh, the best commentaries. Also, one thing that uh, if you want to uh, to really get into how our, um, how uh, Paul is talking about certain arguments, or if you really want to work your way through uh, a passage of scripture, there is a uh, a service that comes out of Bethlehem Baptist Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota, called Bible Ark. Um, so, BibleArk.com. Again, I'll have that link down uh, in the comments after this. And they have classes on how you can Bible arc, and I really can't even uh, describe it for you. In fact, the graphic that I'll put on here looks more complicated than it really is, but it is incredibly helpful uh, in order to understand the flow of an argument of a biblical writer. Uh, for even us average people, it's really helpful for figuring out why is Paul saying this, and how is this connected to that? And it's just an amazing service. I think it has a yearly subscription that's that's very minimal. And so uh, it'd be helpful to look into that. Uh, finally, uh, you can get some study materials um, that would be uh, very good um, for you to just do self-guided um, study. One, uh, one study that I have uh, used for those self-guided things is uh, something called uh, Life Books. And it's got uh, the Scribe Bible Journal. And it's really cool. You can see on the graphic here of what uh, what what it has for daily habits. What are you going to read and memory and all those sorts of things. And it's really good for building up those those daily habits. In fact, it's a local company. It, it comes out of St. Paul, uh, where it is both written and published. And um, so I want to strongly recommend that to you. But perhaps the best uh, material that you can use for uh, for Bible study and digging into these things is just a plain old notebook. Sometimes I just want a journal. You know, I'm reading through a scripture and I, I write down the questions that I have, the, the, um, the insights that I'm gleaning, maybe verses that, that are, that are uh, hitting me in the feels. And so, um, you know, just having a, a regular old notebook is one of the best and least expensive options uh, that you can go with. So there you go. There are uh, some of the things that uh, that I would recommend. Obviously, there are a ton of really good 
resources out there. If you know of any good resources for studying the Bible that I did not cover, uh, be sure to put those in the comments, and uh, and I'd love to have those featured and uh, and highlighted for people as well. So I want to thank you for sticking with me. I know I said I'd go short, but uh, I rarely do that. And so I appreciate you, love you, and hope you're having a great day.